Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to learn how to use hinges a little better. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a kind of drawbridge or a door that falls when you push on it. And in order to do that, we need a few parts. So let's go ahead and create a couple of blocks. So I'm going to create one block and I'm going to change it to a one, one, one. Okay. And then I'm going to make a copy of this and let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. Oh, and you know, something that I, I should show you is that if your, if your um, camera control is not precise enough, like if it's moving too much, whenever you push um, any of the camera control buttons, you can actually change that. And let me show you that real quick. If you go into file and then studio settings, at the very beginning, studio, it has a camera section. And you can make these smaller so that the camera uh, moves a smaller amount whenever you push the buttons. And so I think this starts out of, off at a 1.5 for camera speed. I made mine 0 0.5. And then when you hold shift, this is how the camera will move. And I have this at 0.2. And you can also control the camera mouse wheel speed for zoom. Um, I forget what this is to begin with, but I have mine set at a 5. And you can make this as um, as small as you want. Uh, try different values and see what it what it does. What it will have you do though when you change these is it will have you restart um, Roblox Studio. The other thing is that there's also an option for camera zoom to mouse position. If you have this on, then whenever you zoom, the camera will zoom toward wherever your mouse is. If you have this off, then the camera will just zoom um, kind of centered. Okay, so play with those uh, settings if your camera control is just not precise enough and that will definitely help. Okay, so let me go here. So we're gonna make a copy of this. So I have collisions off and I'm gonna do Control D to make a copy. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And the way this is gonna work is one of these is gonna be our door and one of these is gonna be our kind of hinge, okay? So let's go ahead and make this. And normally what I would do is I would connect the hinge while these parts were both small, but that doesn't work for this one because if we change the size of this to make our door, it'll actually move the connections and I don't want it to do that. So we're going to um, change the size before we attach the hinge. Okay. So this one I'm going to make, uh, let's see. And for this one, I'm just going to stretch it because I can tell what um, sizes I have here. Uh, here's the size in the in the properties window. But I want to stretch it this way because I want it to stay centered with this one. So I'm going to make it um, bigger this way and I'm going to make this an eight. Yeah. And um, I was going to say, oh, I have my studs set to 0.5 on this one. And then I'm also going to move it up so that it's at eight. And I might have to zoom out. Let me zoom out. There we go. So now you can see over here that I have my size at 881. Um, but what I wanted was for, let me move my camera. What I wanted was for this and this lower corner to, to remain aligned. That's why I didn't change the size using the properties window. Okay. And so basically I want this to lock into the bottom corner. You can see how it, let me zoom in. You can see how it's locked in aligned with the bottom corner of my door. And that's what I want because I want it to pivot right there. Okay. So now actually, let me zoom in a little more. We are ready to make the attachments, but let me change the color on this. I'm going to change it to a light purple. There we go. Okay. So I've selected nothing by clicking on empty space and I'm in the model menu and I'm going to create a hinge and it's already selected, but let me go ahead and create a hinge here. And uh, the direction that you do this matters. So I think I want to connect the door to this little pivot point. So I'm going to start here and see how you, this time, see now that it's bigger, you can actually pick where you want to attach it, but I'm going to attach it at the very bottom. Okay. And then uh, click here and then click on the pivot point. And that should, that should be in the right direction. Uh, let's see. Yes, because this part here, which I'll call the door, and this part, which I'll call the pivot, whoops, um, the hinge constraint is attached to the door, and that's what we wanted, okay? So now, um, you can actually, we can, 
actually, let me show you what happens when you don't have a, a certain setting change. So we're just going to attach this. So I'm going to bring this in. Uh, let me move it so that it's next to, because remember when we play, this thing is going to make our two pieces uh, connect. And so it's going to move one of these, but I'd rather just have it connected at the beginning. And also what I'm going to do is move it uh, actually a little bit away because this actually, wait, uh, yeah, um, I don't think it's going to fall. I might have to actually push it. So let me put it next to the platform so, or next to the spawn location so I can push this thing. I don't think it's going to fall by itself, but let's check. Oh, I think I forgot to anchor my pivot. Yes. So anchor one of these, otherwise both of them will fall out of the sky or fall down. Okay. So let's see if this works. And it, see, it's perfectly balanced, so it's not moving, but let me show you what happens if I touch it. Oh, oh, well, I fell, but, um, <laughs> you can see here when I stop falling. Wow. I think something broke. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Not sure why that's taking so long. Okay. So you can see that this, um, door, it swung all the way down and it's really hard to see that. Let me see if I can, let me move it closer so I don't fall so you can see it happen. So I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to move them a little closer. Oh, whoops. Oh, you see, it didn't select the hinge constraint. So let me undo that. Make sure everything's selected. Control left click. And then let me move it over here. Oh, why is it? Oh, I forgot to select the door. Okay. So select the door as well and then move these over and up. I just want this to swing and I don't want to fall. I think if I have it there, that should be fine. Okay. So now I'm going to push play. I just want you to see what happens when you, um, create a hinge. It just swings freely. So let me, let me click on it and let me get to the side way here, side here. Okay. There it goes. So that's what I wanted you to see. See this thing just swings. It just swings and, um, well, it stops eventually. And you might actually want that for certain things, right? If you had a, I don't know, a hammer that you made out of this, that you wanted to fall and uh, squish players, you could do it this way. That'd be fine. Uh, let me stop it. But we don't want that. We want it to stay in place. And so one thing you could do would be to put something on the other side, like put something here that would stop it. And then it would fall and hit that. And that, that's one solution. But the other thing is that there's actually a setting for this. And let me go ahead and separate these so you can see something. Let me separate this out. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in here. And actually, that's okay right there. Yeah, this is good. Okay, so um, I'm just zoomed in on this hinge. And what I want you to see is the following. When I select the hinge constraint, there's actually a property near the bottom that says limits enabled right here. Go ahead and turn that on. And now you're going to see these little green lines right here, which are the hinge constraint angular limits. And I, I wonder if you could even move them. Let me see if I could even move these things. No, you can't. That'd be kind of neat if you could just move them. Um, but what you want to do is you want to change the values here. So right now it's going to move from this angle to this angle. And it's, I know it's hard to see, but um, I'm going to change these values. So I think, let me see what values work. I think this one's the bottom one. So I'm going to make this zero. Let's see if that works. And 90. And you'll see that now these are different on here. Um, and it's either, it's either a zero 90 or 90 zero. And we just have to kind of test it out. So let's test this out. Let's see if zero, 90 or zero for the lower angle and 90 for the upper angle work. Let's try that. And we might be done if this works. If not, we'll just switch them. Okay. Let me turn around and let me bump into this and see if it stops. And it did. Okay. So that those were the right values. So zero 90. Um, and that's it. We've made, we've made our kind of draw bridge. So let me stop this and let's just do a few finishing things here. So again, um, you can tell, um, just looking at yours, you can see where these uh, little green lines are and you can uh, match them. But again, if you, if you followed along, you would just want these to be zero for the lower angle and 90 for the upper angle. Okay. And I just uh, turned on limits enabled for this. Okay. And the actuator type is none. Now we've used two of them, right? We've used the, um, the, the motor and we've used none. And let me show you what servo does. Servo actually, 
it's almost the same thing, it's, uh, except it doesn't fall, it moves. And so right now we're using gravity to move this, but if you weren't using gravity, you could use the servo to do that. Okay, and let me um, let me go ahead and uh, finish this up a little bit. So one thing we wanna do is we wanna move this into position. There it is, okay, and then we want to, um, one thing I want to do is, right now, I don't really like the shape here. Um, I wonder if I could change it into a, a, a cylinder. Hmm. Let me try. Let me try and see what happens if I change it into a cylinder. That would be so neat. Oh, and it does. It looks better that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's that's kind of the look I wanted. It looks like it's actually a rod that would spin. Okay, good. So now, and of course, you could always just you know make this invisible if you don't like the way that looks. Um, or put another one on the other side so that it looks like uh, some kind of rod going through this thing. Um, but let me go ahead and move this. So I'm going to select everything, or try to, and it didn't select everything again. So let me use Control left click, Control left click to select all of this. Let me move it more towards the center. And um, let me see. I want to I want to make this into a group. So I'm going to hit group. I'm going to call this draw bridge because that's kind of what it is. Draw bridge. Like you would see in front of a castle. Okay, so we have our draw bridge. And then the only thing I want to do is make sure that it's high enough or low enough. Let's see. That looks good, but I, I think I could actually have it lower. And let me a little bit further away. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, that should work. Let's uh, let's test this and see what this looks like. This looks pretty good. And we have our doors. Okay, so now um, we can make copies of these and you can see how I made that same thing in the demo. So um, you could, let me go ahead and select this and turn on the move button and we're going to go ahead and make copies of these and I have collisions off control D and move it and you'll have to kind of figure out what spacing you need for these I made these eight and here's how you can tell so the the width or the height of these is eight so let's see where this one starts this one starts and the direction we care about is the Z so if we look the Z it's at um, eight for the origin position and so we want to move at least eight away so let's see where this one is this one's at 17.5, so let me move it a little closer. Let's say 18. Actually, 18 should be good. Okay, and I'm gonna move them away 10 from each other every time, and this is a good way to do it. So let me Control Duplicate, Control D, and move it 10. So instead of 18, I want this one to be 28 away. Almost, let me move it this one. Okay, and I'm gonna do one more. So this one is at 28. I'm gonna make a copy, Control D, and I'm gonna move it uh, 28 to 38. Okay, and you could also just you know try different numbers and see what works, but this is a little more precise. Um, so let's test our bridge and see that it works. And hopefully all of the settings got copied over. Let's see. So now we should have four of these, yeah. And let's test it and see if it works. <laughs> I put them. I made them too far. Okay, I, I I made them too far apart, and that's okay. It's easy to fix. Yeah, I made them too far. Oh, it works. I didn't fall through. Although you really should have these closer together. So, um, I spaced them ten apart. You would probably want to space them nine apart because the, it's still possible to fall through these things. Yeah. See. Okay, but uh, you get the point. And it's really easy to move these together. So let me show you. You would just um, move these a little closer. Actually, all of these you'd move a little closer so that you can't fall through. And again, you could use the properties window to do this, but this is fine. I just want it. Um, I just don't want to fall through. Okay, let's test it again. And let's see. Let 
I don't fall. Oh, I almost fell. <laughs> I still are still too far. Okay, anyway, you get the point. Um, make sure you get these spacings correct so that you don't fall through when you're when you're walking over these drawbridges. Uh, but that's it, actually. These work. The only thing is just to adjust the spacings. And again, you could um, make this look different, right? You could use different shapes. You could um, put two of these little cylinders, one on each side, to make it look like there's a rod going through. Or you could just make it invisible and have the uh, just the drawbridge there. You could also have a picture on here, something like push, right, or a hand or something to let the player know that they're supposed to push these in order to make them fall. Uh, but that's it. You can go ahead and uh, delete the, most of these and uh, save one of these to your toolbox. Uh, oh, and it doesn't let me do it here, huh? Okay, you have to actually right click over here in the in the Explorer window and then save to Roblox there, okay? And uh, that's it for this video. In, in the next video, we will learn how to use some more constraints. So I'll see you then.